here for the aviation industry in Nigeria. The sector witnessed some positive developments which experts believe should be leveraged upon to develop the country into a hub in the West African sub-region. Well, let's talk this aviation sector and the outlook for 2018. Aviation analyst Tayo Ojiri is in the studio. Many thanks for your time, um, Mr. Ojiri. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, a lot happened in that sector. Mostly positive, if I, if I may put it that way. Uh, but let's take it uh, one after the other. Looking at a review of 2017. First off, let's see. Oh, Nigeria steps up in, in 2017 in global aviation safety rating. That's talking about climbing uh, to level three state safety uh, program implementation process, joining countries like the US and the UK in that echelon. Well, tell us, what has that done to that sector, really? Absolutely, like you rightly stated. A good starting point will be to actually highlight the, what I call the carryover factors from 2017. First of all, we did have a great and phenomenal year in 2017. There was no major accidents. And this actually helped us. That's what you just pointed to. This actually helped us with our perception, with our ratings level. Over and beyond that, we, have, uh, we had the six airlines actually, or about um, six domestic airlines actually went through the IATA IOSA certification, which is an internationally accredited as a safety measure for all the airlines operating. And four of three of these airlines actually became IATA members. Then we actually saw the stability of foreign exchange during the year, whereby we had it was a cushion for international airlines to be able to repatriate their funds. funds. This actually provided funds, preferential domestic, uh, foreign exchange for domestic airlines as well to be able to purchase their spares, to be able to train their uh, actually their pilots and engineers, and we also had the certification of Lagos and Abuja, Abuja Airport. Airport. What does that do for us? It helps us with the insurance premium for landing and operating within airport. Over and beyond that, it actually helps us improve the perception, the rating of aviation sector within Nigeria and within West Africa. This actually helps us improve the human development capacity of Nigeria as, as well. All right, that's very good to hear. A lot of positives in that sector, but some other things, if I may say negative, also happened. Uh, talking about Amcon taking over Arik Air, uh, there was a lot of controversy in that area. Of course, we know the case is still pending in court, but many people saw Arik as the largest domestic airline in Nigeria and some sort of national career, if I may say. Why do you think that was so? I would say it was something that w w was uh, obvious that to happen, obvious to happen in the sense that you actually had issues with governance you had issues with operations and the uh, the regulator actually there was the financial and economic viability of this airline and obviously the financial issues that Amcon had to take over but the, the, it was too big to fail as it were exactly. they get, got in not, it wasn't just Eric by the way okay. there was Aero as well but in all of the takeover we found that, that you actually had other airlines that stepped up to the bit. We had Medview, we had uh, Airpiece, we had uh, Dynam First Nation that stepped up. Okay. So we were, they were able to actually, there were some, uh, some, uh, some issues during that time, but we, they, they actually had other airlines that came to take over. All right, uh, some also uh, issues of controversy is uh, talking about the rehabilitation of the Abuja airport runway. We, there were so many protests from some quarters, but of course the government achieved uh, what it was able to achieve and it wasn't at the end of the day humiliated. Uh, what do you see in that area, really? I would say that was a plus <laughs> for the government, government because obviously you have government uh, post, uh, postulating and giving timelines for projects and they, it becomes uh, open-ended. But this actually was well-managed project whereby you actually had an alternative, uh, alternate okay. air, airport, which was Kaduna, which was set up. And government actually took upon the, the responsibility of providing security and transportation from Abuja to Kaduna. So that was actually well done within the space of the six weeks. The takeaway from that, which became positive, was the opening of Kaduna Airport as an international airport. airport. What, thereafter, you now had 
increased traffic. You have increased flight of flight operations into Kaduna now, which never uh, uh, existed and it's prior still, to. It's, it, if you're going to look at how busy that airport is now, is it still very busy even after Abuja was Ob open? Obviously not. Uh, they, Abuja, there are lots of drivers that push Abuja, put tra uh, push trans passengers to Abuja, which Ab Kaduna doesn't have. have. But obviously they're trying to actually grow that. It's something that can be built on. All right, talking about uh, more of that, also the airport's concession and the creation of a new national carrier is still uh, one issue that is burning. Talk to us about that. I call that the great expectations of 2018. 18, okay. Because I, it, government had actually started about uh, so much about that. But what we've seen is they've not be, there's not been so much forthrightness or awareness, at his, as it were, of much information in the public domain of what model is the government going to use for the concession process. What tra the, we had information that the transaction advisors have been nominated. Who are these transaction advisors? What is the process? Where are they going to, what's the data? And on what, what process are we used to, going to use to nominate, uh, to actually choose which airport? Why the four airports? So these are the, these are the burning questions that need to be addressed prior to actually going forward on the concession sure. process. And actually, uh, just to, uh, uh, in addition to that is the national airline. Still the same thing. The consultants have not been, uh, not been uh, made public. And with that, them not making the consultant, but we don't know what the terms of engagement is. Will be. All right. After the break, we'll be talking about the outlook. Okay. How could we leverage on these achievements in 2017? And what do we expect from that sector in 2018? And plus, Nigerian stock market records unprecedented gains, the highest since 2014. Just stay with us. You're watching Business Tonight. We've been talking the aviation sector and 2018 outlook. Tayo Jiri is in the studio. Aviation analyst. We've been talking about developments in that sector, a review of what has happened so far in 2017 and what to expect in 2018. Yes, Tayo, just at a point, the federal government issued an executive order on ease of doing uh, business. And that is a very good reform uh, which should impact on that sector uh, Looking forward in 2018, what more do we get from that, from that order? We can actually, we can grow on it and we can actually build on that. It's actually been a very big, good posit positive for aviation sector because we've actually had an increased traffic, business traffic in, in, in terms of our visa and arrivals. That actually helped the, has helped the system because obviously it actually takes the, the, the challenge of uh, the visa uh, issuing process away from the foreign embassies. Okay. Uh, over and beyond that, we've actually had a passenger demand, pass domestic passenger de uh, demand, demand, which is actually due to the growth in GDP and disposable income for 2018. So with this, we're actually going to see lots of business Lots of foreign direct investment into to Nigeria. This actually will bring, will bring uh, more people in. However, the challenge is still the security challenge because with security, there's still the perception of tourism is not being harnessed properly for, uh, for travel. So we're only seeing lots of travel from business uh, people, people rather than uh, tourism. Okay, but... Talking about security, um, security it takes me to the last event in December where there was a robbery uh, on two jets. I know the government is working on that, but how could that have happened in this day and time? I wish I could tell you, but obviously <laughs> the investigation is still ongoing. And as at um, the start of this week, they actually started installing CCTV cameras at, on the air side. But over and beyond that, they've has been heightened um, uh, security, uh, security. Um, I'll say heightened security processes, processes. within uh, uh, the perimeter fencing area because that's where you can actually incur into the airport perimeter, and as well as um, the issuance of 
on duty cards has been actually been streamlined now to know who's going in, why they're going in, and to enforce that the no body that's not supposed to be there is on the air side. All right, very briefly now, just before I let you go, 2018, how much do you think aviation would be contributing to the GDP? It will be, contri uh, well, looking at the crystal ball, I would think we're going to go from 0.4% to about 6%. It's not going to be very phenomenal because obviously it's still going to be, there's still going to be, we still have lots of challenges. Infrastructure is still in de desperate, we still need of uh, issues with uh, infrastructure. infrastructure, as well as the need for us to actually get some other policies in place. All right, Division Analyst, Tayo Ojiri, thank you for your time. Thank you, it's we a pleasure. We appreciate it.